in the 30s, people who couldn't afford it didn't have a doctor. There became a recognition that after the war, there would have to be a National Health Service. People wanted to believe that there was a better life. There was a sense that we have to build something together for all of us. By 1975, when Mrs Thatcher became leader of the party, she's alleged to have come into a meeting with a copy of Friedrich Hayek's book, The Constitution of Liberty, slammed it down on the desk and said, this is what we believe. A book which says, basically, any attempt by the state to change social outcomes would inevitably lead to totalitarianism, to Stalinism. Materialistic objectives became part of what was wanted. When we came to power in 1997, the NHS was probably the biggest political issue. We were expected to treat consumers rather than patients. Lobbies have become embedded in policy making and they surround Westminster, pushing for more private company opportunities in the NHS. Our daughter was in a coma for two weeks. By this time, in America, I'd be thinking of remortgaging the house. When the private sector takes over public services, the general trend is for it to become more expensive and for the care to get worse. We, as the public, must take some of the blame. We became a little too obsessed with our own lives. The Secretary of State for Health was hell-bent at destroying a publicly funded and delivered NHS. Here is me taking the government to court about the 2012 Health and Care Act. One of the unions just said, are they public servants or are they private servants? Democracy had been subverted. It's like we're having the carpet pulled from underneath us. You need things in the community that are stable for your society to function and feel safe. And they don't feel safe. I don't feel safe.